Everyone has one at home and many enjoy their games exclusively with them. Controllers. But which is the best controller for racing? A fancy one with thousands of buttons or just a regular one? Let's find out. For many, a controller is the weapon of choice when it comes to gaming. It is versatile and just think about the many use cases. 3D platformers, RPGs and yes, racing titles. Compared to pressing the arrow keys on a keyboard, controllers offer a much richer resolution of input detail, which allows for a much more precise turn-in and smoother acceleration and braking. Yes, steering wheels take that to the extreme and let the player take control like in a real car. But not every game is optimized for steering wheels. Many titles like Forza 7, Forza Horizon 4, Gran Turismo or even F1 2020 were developed with a controller in mind. And not only steering wheels and rigs have upgrade options, a new controller with some extra buttons and features can enhance your driving experience as well. We tested three different controller options to see whether upgrading your pad is really worth it. We're going to start with the most well-known option out there, Microsoft's Xbox Elite controller. It definitely looks awesome, but is it any good? Yes, it is. As soon as you open the packaging, you know that you've bought a premium product. The Elite controller comes with many swappable buttons, shifter-like rocker switches on the back of the housing, and the possibility to adjust the control sticks in their pressure resistance. The last two features in particular are ideal for racing fans as they can enhance your experience dramatically. The rocker switches at the back are just perfect for shifting and are placed so well that the usage feels extremely natural. It is just a shame that these switches are not recognized individually by the games. They represent the A, B, X and Y buttons or the shoulder buttons, which prevents double assignment. As mentioned, with the supplied tool, the sticks can be adjusted in their stiffness as desired. This allows for really precise turning in fast cars like an F1 2020, a noticeable difference compared to its competitors that really makes a difference. And the individual adjustability doesn't end here. This bad boy can download an update with the Xbox Accessories app that opens up a whole new world of customization. At the beginning, the controller was a bit loud and indefinite in its force feedback, but after the update, it was almost as if you had another pad in your hand. The rumbling features of this controller are superb, which comes into play especially when playing games on the Xbox or in the Xbox Game Pass on PC. Titles like Forza Horizon 4 feel awesome, as triggers and bumpers transmit different track surfaces, oversteer and impacts with pinpoint precision. A lot can also be set up with the included software. For example, the sensitivity of the sticks can be adjusted here. Everyone can find their preferred steering settings with this tool. In addition to the option to set the triggers in their travel range directly on the controller using a switch, a dead zone can also be configured in the software. This can be a good option for cars without ABS to avoid accidentally locking the wheels, a really advanced racer tool. All in all, the Elite controller is indeed very elite. It is super changeable and adapts to your preferences. Only the price of about 180 euros is a little bit expensive. From Xbox to their Japanese rivals, PlayStation. With the launch of the PlayStation 5, Sony has also released a new pad to come along with it, the Sony DualSense. And this one packs a punch. The features we were most looking forward to are, of course, the haptic feedback and the haptic triggers. The triggers in particular could make all the difference in racing games as they transmit a false feedback-like feeling to the player. And they do. This pad is like nothing you have ever felt before when it comes to PlayStation games. Just think about Gran Turismo 7. This could possibly become one of the best racing console releases of all time. Of course we'll have a closer look at GT7 as soon as the game comes out, so definitely don't forget to subscribe. But back to the DualSense. We tested the controller on PC and not on a PlayStation 5, which is why not all of the features are integrated just yet due to missing driver support. But still, the feedback it gives you is like nothing ever seen before in a gamepad. The first moment you power on the DualSense, you notice how well built it is. In games like ACC, WRC9 and AMS2, the rumbling effects were amazing. Sometimes maybe a little overdriven, but usually you can adjust that in the settings. Driving over curbs, gravel or sliding around a corner felt amazingly different every time and really reminded us of the feedback a steering wheel can give you. The price performance of the PS5 controller is definitely on point with about 65 euros, but it doesn't do everything right. 
It is plug and play, so you don't need any kind of software for it to run. But in games like F1 2020, there are a couple of calibration problems. First and foremost, it's just annoying to try to find out which button is meant by one or two, leaving you guessing by trial and error. And then there were issues with the steering, which was not exactly well dialed in. Problems which Forza Horizon 4 wish it had, because it is not playable with a pad at all. If you want to use your PlayStation 5 controller, you can do so when using Steam, but unfortunately it is not possible to pair with the Windows 10 store, so you can't play your Xbox Game Pass games with the PlayStation 5 controller. If you're neither cheering for Team Blue nor Team Green, we still have a third contender for your next gamepad upgrade. It does not come with adamantium claws, but it's still razor sharp. The Razor Wolverine V2. The first thing you notice when you take it out of the box is how incredibly well made this controller is. We particularly like the non-slip rubber grips that prevent the pad from slipping, even after hours of driving. Like its competitors, it also feels good in the hand and delivers buttons that feel out of this world. In addition to that, the Razor Wolverine comes with some extra functions like the M1 and M2 buttons on top that can come in handy in tricky situations. Just think about games like F1 2020, where managing your fuel, ERS and DRS can be quite complicated. Extra buttons are always a good thing to have in clutch situations. Also, the triggers can be locked to a shorter travel range with a snap-in lever. This feature can give you a particular advantage in first-person shooters. Compared to the Xbox Elite controller, the Wolverine only has one travel range setting, while Microsoft's flagship model comes with two positions to choose from. The Razer Wolverine has another parallel to the Elite when it comes to software. A number of settings can be made on the Xbox as well as on the PC. However, the setting options are far behind those of Microsoft and the menu navigation is not executed too well either. The Razer Wolverine definitely knows how to bewitch us. It looks good and works perfectly well with PC. The only things we didn't like is that it feels a little bit cheap and the low resistance of the analog stick which makes super plasticky noises when you touch the rim. So which of those controller are you supposed to get? Obviously, it depends on what you're looking for and how much money you want to spend. The PlayStation 5 DualSense is the cheapest of the three advanced options at 65 euros. Its biggest selling point is the haptic feedback that will probably become even better with time when new games are better optimized for it. And if you own a PC and a PlayStation 5, this is a no-brainer. The Razer Wolverine impressed us across the board. For 115 euros, you get a well-rounded product with its well-crafted buttons and extra features. At first glance, it is a good choice, especially for shooter friends, but surely knows how to make its way around racing games as well. The Xbox Elite controller, however, plays in a different league. It comes with many adjustable features that really make a difference when it comes to racing. Shifting with the additional rocker switches at the back or playing with the increased pressure point of the sticks is truly a game changer. Those features probably won't make you go any faster, but surely can better your consistency, which in the end is racing all about. And that's about it for our hardware test of those advanced controller options. Which one do you prefer and what options are still out there which we should check out? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this content, check out our video where we asked the crucial question, do I really need a steering wheel or is a gamepad enough? With Dave Gaming. Don't miss out on that one. And for more esports racing content in general, visit overtake.gg or our YouTube and other social media channels. Thank you so much for having me and until next time, bye.